So I put a poll out on my Instagram, which is linked below, um, asking if people would want a how-to video on how to do the stereoscopic um, photos digitally. Um, a lot of people have reached out to me and were like, oh my god, did you get the camera, the 3D camera? I think it's in the Nishika N8000. Um, really awesome looking camera. I looked it up because why not? And it's a really awesome looking camera. It's definitely a cool way to get the shots. But if you're somebody who's like me, who kind of just likes to figure out how to do things on their own in Photoshop or figure out how to do things differently so you don't have to spend like $300 on the film camera plus the film plus developing fees, all of those things. Um, I'm going to show you today how to do it digitally. So to start a stereoscopic photo are those photos that you see and they kind of like wiggle back and forth. Um, some people call them the Muramasa photos, some people call them stereoscopic, some people call them wiggle grams. I think that's like an app, I'm not sure. No copyright, sorry if it is. Um, so people call them all sorts of things, but basically they're just the photos that like kind of move back and forth. They call, they're call they called 3D photos, but I don't really think that's what they are. It's kind of just like a little wiggle. So the one that I'm going to be using as an example was taken on my Canon 70D, which is actually the camera that I'm using to film right now, because it's got the flip out screen and I can just make sure that I'm not like cropping myself off here or anything. You could basically take them on whatever you want, but I just do suggest that you don't have... Um, like your F at a very low number. The whole point and trick of these photos is to actually have your subject be completely still and the background is what moves. So um, you don't want to have like a super, super blurred background because then it's just going to look kind of like motion blur in the back and it's not going to actually look like a 3D photo that kind of click, 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 back and, back and forth. Um, so the first thing we're going to do and talk about is how to actually take the photos. So a couple days ago was actually my first time taking them, so I'm doing the tutorial with you kind of live. Basically, like, hoping that I got some shots today with my friend Skylar. Shout out Skylar. Um, just to kind of show you that it's easy to develop the skill pretty quick as long as you shoot a bunch. So, I'm going to use this camera as my example. It's a Canon 7D with the 50mm on it. Um, I don't shoot with this camera usually, but it's going to be perfect for what I'm going to show you right now. So, the most important thing that I've realized in shooting the stereoscopic photos or the, the frames for the stereoscopic is making sure that the camera is level on both the X and Y axis. So, we talked about that in high school and people are probably like, what is that? I forgot. Or maybe you're not because you, you remember and you're smart. Good for you. But for those who don't know what I'm talking about, the x-axis, the camera needs to stay as level as possible this way. So you don't want to shoot around your subject and click, 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 click and fall down or click, 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 click and fall up. You want to try to stay on a really straight line on that x-axis. And the same applies to the y-axis. So you don't want to click, 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 click. You just, you just want to keep it as level as possible. So that way when you're lining up the photos, which will make more sense later, um, you're not having to crop a lot of the background out. The background's the part that moves, so you want to see as much background as possible. I would suggest when you're starting, start shooting horizontally. Um, I know a lot of people that shoot portraits shoot them vertically just because you're going to fit more of a person's body in there, and that's totally fine, but you just really want to make sure that you have this level so that way you can have as much background as possible. So if you're going to start, I would say do the first few in horizontal just because you have more surface area at the bottom of your camera to really make sure it's level. So that's the first thing you do. You take the photos. I'm going to assume you know how to edit photos because that's probably past your um, area of expertise, which is why you're looking into doing something more. So I'm going to go into my computer and I'm going to quick edit the photos and I'm going to be right back. Great, so once you have all your photos edited, I would recommend using three to five. Once you get more more than five, it does get a little bit too long and you lose the effect of that like wiggle back and forth. Um, so I would suggest starting out with three because that's gonna be the easiest place to start and learn. So let's go to our computer. Let's get our um, Photoshop document open. So when I use them or I do them, I make a custom size, which is just the size that my camera shoots. 
So since I'm doing a horizo horizontal shot of Hannah, I'm going to do a, an 18.24 width and a 12.16 height. That's the size that the images are already from my camera, so I'm just going to make it the same to make it easier. So once you have your, uh, your document open, your new Photoshop document, find your photos. So the way that I've labeled them here is just Mara for the Mara Masa or Mira Masa or whatever. Um, Hannah, and I actually messed up this one, so I'm going to skip that one, and I'm just going to grab four for now, and I'm going to show you why I'm grabbing four. Actually, let's grab this fifth one. So once you have them selected, and you can also do this from Lightroom too, you can just click and drag them directly to Photoshop. Click and drag them and drop them onto your canvas. And what this is gonna do is it's not gonna open a new tab every single time. Um, I know that sometimes when you drag and drop one at a time, Photoshop will wanna open a new tab every time. That's gonna make your life a lot harder. So drag and drop all of them into one canvas. And let's check mark every single one that comes up. What this is gonna do is it's gonna convert it to a smart object. So that way that's easier, this um, is easier to make the frame animation later. If you're not familiar with smart objects, you could totally YouTube what they are. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail on that in this video because I'm trying to make it as quick as possible and there's a lot to say about smart objects in Photoshop. So once you have all your photos, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and line up um, the photos so that way we can line up the subject and have the background move around here. So once you get all of your photos um, shifted into Photoshop as a smart object, what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the first, uh, the top three layers here and just leave the first two photo layers on. We're going to keep the background layer, you can keep it locked, we're going to keep it white, this will make sense later for when we have to do some cropping. So in our second layer selected, our second photo layer selected, let's turn the opacity down like halfway and notice that the subject isn't lined up in these photos. That's the whole point of this step, we're going to line up her face because she's gonna be the center focus of this stereoscopic photo. So what I usually do is I just use the move tool up here and move it until it's close, and then I use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it back and forth. And you can zoom in too if it makes it easier for you, but just for this to be quick, I'll just leave it as is. That looks pretty good to me. So turn the opacity back up on the second one, we're gonna do the same thing going up. So the next one, we're gonna turn the opacity halfway down, and we're going to line up her eyes. Perfect. Turn the opacity up. We're going to do it again. So this one looks like it's going to be really, really far off. This fourth layer. Um, we'll keep it for now, but when we run our run through our test, this one might have to go. Because as you can see right here, there's this harsh line, which means we're going to have to crop a lot out of this photo. Turn the Capacity down, and this one looks like it's going to be even worse. So we're just actually, this is why I imported this fifth one to show you. I'm just going to lose the fifth one because the, now there's not enough background in common with the first four in order for me to get a good, a big enough picture to really see the background move. So as you can see, the end edge of this when she's almost lined up is like way over here. So we're actually just going to delete this layer. Perfect. So now we have a little bit of a sneak peek of what's going to happen. But what we need to do is check every single layer with this background on. So when we check, these little white parts are parts that we obviously need to crop out because they're not in every photo and that's gonna look weird when we do our frame animation. So let's just crop that out. Looks good, I think. Crop out that little extra white on the side. I'm not sure why I didn't catch that, but we'll just get rid of a little extra. Perfect. Let's double check this one. Okay, so each layer often does have like little bits that need to be fixed and cropped out of it. It's not like you did anything wrong. Um, but since I'm pretty new to this as well, what makes us have to crop out more on each photo is the fact that maybe I just moved too much to like the left or to the right when I took these photos. And so I didn't have enough of the same background in common with everything. And this one needs to be cropped as well. Kind of have a little preview of what this is going to look like. Great, so moving on to actually making the stereoscopic photo. 
In Photoshop, there's a palette called Timeline, and it's not gonna be open by default in your Photoshop unless for some reason you've used it before and you have yours on. So if you don't have it on, this is what the Timeline palette looks like. I link mine to the bottom. Um, go to Window and look, click Timeline. So I just turned mine off. So I'm gonna turn it back on, Window Timeline. And down here, yours is gonna set to default to create video timeline. You can click this if you want to because you can toggle between video and frame animation once you accidentally click it, but to do what we're actually doing, go to create frame animation and then click the button. So then this creates a little frame down here. If you accidentally click go on video, you can toggle between video and frame right here in the bottom left. Cool, so moving to creating our frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set ours to 0 0.2. 0 0.2 seconds delay seems to be the best delay amount for these stereoscopic photos. Basically each frame is gonna be shown for 0.2 seconds. So the way that the frames are made are super easy. Whatever layers are on invisible and visible, not invisible, um, are gonna be what the frame is. So I'm gonna create a new frame. This is our first frame right here. It's got our first photo layer on and it's set to 0.2 seconds. And so we have our one, two, three, four, but in order for this to look like it's moving back and forth, we actually need to go one, two, three, four, three, two. Since we're gonna set this to a continuous loop, we don't need to put one at the end or else the one is gonna play twice. So if we added a one at the end, it would go one, two, three, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, and we don't want that. So we still just need to make a third frame and a second frame. Go back to our second. And there we are. Now we can preview this by pressing play down here. And this is where it's going to change how much you play it. So you can play the animation one time, you can play it three times in a row, or you can have it set to a forever loop. You probably want it set to forever. So when you press play, sometimes it takes a minute just to kind of load. But that's what happens when you press play. You have your stereoscopic photo. Cool. Exporting the photo. Exporting the photo is not the same as just saving like a regular photo in Photoshop. So you're going to go to File, Export, and you're going to Save for the Web. So what this does is actually let you save this as a GIF instead of just a photo. So when we go to Save for the Web, it's going to take me to the Wheel of Death here for some reason. <laughs> cool. Yours will probably set be set to default as JPEG. Just go to this right here, it's under preset, just leave unnamed, that's fine. And click GIF and then you can save. I've already saved this, so I'm not gonna save another one, um, but click save and then you have a GIF. And you can send that via email, you can send that via WeTransfer, AirDrop, text message, however you want. Um, but I found that the biggest issue people have is wanting to post them to Instagram. Instagram doesn't support GIFs yet, so we can't post one that we've made already. And I got a few apps on my phone actually to try to fix this issue, but it didn't work. So I have Giphy Cam, GIF Maker, and Giphy, and none of those did it for me. So if you have an iPhone, I can't speak for an Android because I'm not an Android user, really sorry to you guys out there, but I'm sure there is an app for this. You can screen record on your phone. So what I'll do is I'll just play like a gift that I made. For example, I'll play a gift that I made. Woo. And just screen record here. Oops. And again, this is just for Instagram. This isn't gonna be the best quality that you can get. Um, let it play for a little while just to, so it can record the video. Ba -ba -ba. And then I'll stop the screen record. And then you can go in and trim the edges so you don't see the scrolling up to start and the scrolling down. And then luckily, the only time that Instagram's crop has been any good is that it's gonna crop out that bar on the top that says, oh, you're screen recording at the top of your iPhone. And you could post it to Instagram. It's not gonna be the best quality. And I have found that sometimes my iPhone like squishes the photo. Um, it didn't do it in the horizontal photo of Hannah, but I did have a vertical one of her. And for some reason it was like normal on my computer, but then when I airdropped it to my phone, it like squished and her head looked squished a little bit. So just be careful of that, but otherwise they're super simple and I can't wait to see what you guys make of it.